Rin from How Would Be That Game. And today I've brought in the best of the best to talk about underrated Switch games. Let's check it out. Welcome back to an extremely special episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game. Now, I want to start off by first saying <laughs> I'm so sorry for the gap in content. I tried my best not to, but here we are. However, I have come bringing gifts as an apology. Um, <laughs> I have reached out to my absolute favorite Nintendo Switch creators for them to share criminally underrated Switch games and they pulled through. Uh, there is not a single game they brought up that I've personally played, so I have my own homework to check these out because they look so fan-freaking-tastic. However, before we get to that, I just want to encourage you all to please check out the description and, the, and also the pinned comment uh, to check out everybody's channel. They are just so wonderful. I, I love any, each and every one of them. Now, um, I've got a kind of a wide range of different genres that everybody brought here today, so I hope you enjoy please check out their channels and i just want to thank you all so much for your patience and uh yeah i, I hope you enjoy hello i'm britta food for dogs many thanks to ren for the opportunity to present my case for the famicom detective club this dual set of detective investigation games dates back to 1988-89 in Japan. A localized remake quietly came to the Switch three years ago. I just finished playing both stories. Yes, the focus is firmly on the narrative. You need to solve murder cases after all. These are not visual novels. There is only one successful outcome solving the case and you need to act like a proper detective talking to people asking questions collecting clues it's a simple yet effective gameplay style you will often need to repeat interviews until a new piece of information is revealed i have never felt so much like a real detective with all its frustrations as here the games have beautiful new graphics and small animations. You play as young detective assistant Taro at Utsuki Agency, and your own family mystery is sewn into the tapestry of these two cases. I would describe the original Missing Air story as harking back to the era of classic Japanese detective fiction, especially the famous Inugami curse. There are also a few puzzles included. The second game, which is in fact a prequel to The Missing Air, has a strong horror element. Both games are highly enjoyable for those with a reservoir of patience. The great news is that a completely new Famicom Detective Club game will be released on the 29th of August. Happy detecting! When Ren asked me what my Switch hidden gem would be, for some reason the opportunity to talk about the adorable Void Terrarium games came to mind, probably because I find them cute and fun. It's not just the robotic adorableness of Caretaker Robot Robbie that makes me love these games, although it certainly doesn't hurt, but rather a combination of roguelike dungeon crawling and Tamagotchi elements done in a unique and replayable way, making it one of the few experiences I've picked up after finishing it on PlayStation for my Switch for the potential I thought it has as a train game as someone who can it's often. In terms of that, it served me well in that way as a game I've picked up at multiple points for some post-apocalyptic dungeon crawling for supplies fun. The random nature of the buffs you get and its floors means that no dungeon run is ever truly the same, and the added element of having the cute and mysterious lost survivor of humanity Toriko having you on call for her if her Tamagotchi tells you she needs food or a toilet-related terrarium clean, and mix in with the decorating of the terrarium and feeding her, it creates this interesting blend of randomization 
action, dungeon crawling, and caretaking that I feel is one of a kind in the first entry with exciting story beats at the end, and even more to pull you in with with Void Terrarium 2 if you fall in love with the world like I did. It's definitely not NIS America's most known Switch title by far, which is why I'm putting it here, so I'd love to see anyone check it out or the reviews for it on my channel, which is called JRPG Jungle, if you want to look more. Big thanks to Ren for asking me to say my piece, and to all of you for listening, and hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Hey everybody, it's Femtrooper, and thanks to Ren for having me in on this collab, for talking about a criminally underrated Switch game, and of course, I'm going to talk about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Nobody really talks about this game, it kind of just came out and then got, you know, swept under the carpet, and I don't know, but it's really good. It's excellent, it's a fun game based on the anime, and if you don't know, you can go in completely blind. This is basically covering the entire anime from start to finish. It's all four arcs, it's kind of like just watching the anime but playing it as a video game. Such a fun time, I really like this game. It's one of my favorite Switch games actually, and it's what made me a Dragon Ball Z fan. So I highly recommend it. It's a JRPG, it's action combat. So if you don't really like turn-based, maybe you'll like this. It's cell shaded beautiful graphics. I played it in Japanese with the original voice cast. It is such a fun time. You get to experience all sorts of events from the manga and the anime. It is just a total blast. You will love this. It is so much fun, and it was really cool to explore the world of Dragon Ball Z, but in a JRPG format. Super fun. Definitely check this out. Even if you've never played Dragon Ball Z, I assure you it's got a wonderful story that will leave you hooked and like you won't be able to put it down because it is so much fun. Thank you again, Ren, for having me on. I'm so excited to see what everyone else chose for this because it's a great topic. And of course, I hope to see you guys over at my channel. My name is Mr. Robot Joe, and I make videos about video game news and Nintendo Switch content, and I just want to say thanks for having me a part of this video. The Nintendo Switch has so many hidden gems, and some of them are still hidden, but if I could only talk about one today, I would pick one that might be the greatest game of all time, a game called Bum Simulator. Now I'm just playing. I want to talk about a game called Curse to Golf. I'm not really sure how I first learned about Curse to Golf, but from the moment I first seen it, I was very intrigued. The premise is very simple. You're a golfer who gets struck by lightning and dies. Instead of going to heaven or hell, you're sent to purgatory. The way you get out of purgatory is by defeating 18 levels, or in this case, 18 holes of golf. The game is very challenging, and each hole gets more difficult than the one previous. Some of the shots seem impossible to make. Lucky for you, you're able to buy a wide range of power-ups. Now here's where it gets pretty crazy. If you lose at any time on any hole, you have to go right back to the beginning. So if you somehow made it all the way to hole 18, and you lose, you have to go back to hole 1. You might think golfing the same 18 levels or the same 18 holes over and over might get a little boring. And you would be right, but that's not the case here. One of my favorite things about this game is all the levels are procedurally generated. What I'm trying to say is you will never play the same hole twice, so it keeps the game fresh and engaging. Also, as you get further into the game, the environments start to change. With new locations come new challenges and obstacles to overcome. When you start on hole 1, it feels like a fun charming, relaxing game of golf with cute graphics. But as you get closer to that 18th hole, it starts to get very intense. Everything about this game is perfect in my opinion. The graphics, the art style, the gameplay, the music, it has it all. I really hope everyone gets a chance to experience this game one day, and I just wanna say thank you so much for having me a part of this video. Peace out. Hey, thanks, Ren, for inviting me to be a part of your criminally underrated Nintendo Switch games. I'm Clayton Morris from Clayton Morris Plays, and oh man, this took me right back to the 1980s, and I was thinking and racking my brain, what is a game that's criminally underrated? And that is Super Blood Hockey on the Nintendo Switch, originally released in 2019. Now we got a physical release from Premium Edition Games. I've fallen in love with this game, and look, I know there are great RPGs out there, all sorts of little hidden gems, but this takes me right back to what I loved about gaming from from my childhood, sitting on a couch, getting in a fight with my friend, playing Blades of Steel on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And you have to have that experience, right? To me, that's the best part about video gaming is getting up and throwing the controller down and being super pissed that your friend got the better controller and he scored the goal and you didn't. But Super Blood Hockey captures all of that in this beautiful 8 and 16-bit 
era where you get to get in fights with individuals and and it gets super bloody and super violent just as the name implies super blood hockey and of course there's also lots of stuff that happens in the locker room you get fights in the locker room in the showers and yeah there's little pixel art guys with their you know no no clothes on getting in fights and there's blood pouring all over the hockey floor but my son and I who's now 14 years old I've really tried to on the weekends do beat em ups nights with him where we sit down and we just play whether it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Shredder's Revenge, or Final Fight, but we've really fallen in love with Super Blood Hockey, and we yell at each other and have a blast and laugh our butts off. So this is one of those, I think, criminally underrated Nintendo Switch games you can play with up to four people and just have an absolute blast playing Super Blood Hockey. So check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Thanks, Ren. Hey, guys. Radical Reggie here, and my game of choice is Guild. This is a survival horror game where you play as a child named Sally who's looking for her missing friend. And um, this game will give you the vibe of, of a little bit of Silent Hill and Alan Wake. And what I mean by that is that you go into this town that's alternate from your own, but it's, it's very twisted. Now, you get to this town by accident because Sally's being chased by bullies. And uh, she's trying to find an alternate way home, but ends up like just going <laughs> this this different route, and um, it takes us to the world of guilt. One of the things that makes this game feel so unnerving is that you're playing as a child, and she's by herself all alone in this like just desolate world, and um, it, it's pretty terrifying, you know. And one of the things in this game I think really sticks out, of course, is the main place you're gonna be at is the school. A school building at night looks very terrifying. You know, there's barely any lights on. It's, it's just weird and it's vacant. And you could tell that in this game until you run into a lot of these freakish monsters. Now, when you run into these guys, it's implored that you try to hide or even just sneak up behind them and attack them. But if you run, be very careful because they could track you and uh, you need to find hiding spots uh, if you run from them because if they catch you, it's, it's going to be a tough time. I played this game on a live stream about a year ago and had a great time. Now, here's another thing with this game. It has three endings, and of course, when I beat the game, I got one of the worst endings, and you could tell I felt the guilt, but I went back, tried again, and got the best ending, so I was feeling pretty happy. But uh, anyways, guys, hope you will try this game out. It is very enjoyable. It is definitely worthy of your time on the Switch. And if you like survival horror games, even better. And Ren, thanks for having me on. I hope you play this game as well. Oh my gosh, I just loved all those entries so much. Now, for my own entry here, I wanted to kind of bring my A game for this one. And I still consider the most underrated of Switch games that I've played to be Sword of the Vagrant. I have just absolutely fallen in love with this game even after playing it so many times. But if you're a fan of Vanillaware or any type of kind of action adventure, Metroid, almost Metroidvania style of games, you gotta check this out. But for any old school Vita fans that love Muramasa the Demon Blade, uh, Sword of the Vagrant is right up your alley. Really it wears its inspiration on its sleeve with its Vanillaware inspirations. However, I just think that Underneath even that gorgeous aesthetic, you're going to find a quality action RPG here. Uh, for me, just uh, it's a ton of replay value because it's such an easy pick up and play game. It's not very long. So, you know, it, you could just knock it out in a weekend, honestly. It's just such a wonderful experience. And I think after the Switch has long since come and gone, people will be discovering this game for years to come. I can't wait to see what this developer brings forward in the future. You have a wide range of different boss fights with some really cool, unique mechanics. There's even a true ending for the in this game for you to kind of dive into. I will warn you, it, it's locked behind a pretty difficult boss fight. I just had a wonderful time with this. Uh, this is one of my favorite games that I've reviewed on the channel, and I just can't help but just kind of help shout its praises because I still get quite a few comments of people who are discovering the game, and I'm so excited for them. For people who are jonesing for just an action RPG experience, just a quality progression path system, but also a really kind of dark uh, storyline that I found to be pretty intriguing. I mean, it bought, I was very much bought into it. 
I would love to see maybe more from this world, even though the developer's next game doesn't appear to be connected to this one at all. I'm just really endeared to Vivian and her story. The atmosphere in this game is very intense, but just with a gorgeous landscape. Some of the most beautiful backgrounds and <laughs> that I found on the Nintendo Switch here. And yeah, if just for 2D action adventure fun, you cannot do better than Sword of the Vagrant. It's a criminally underrated game that I hope more people discover. Well, with that, there you have it. Those are <laughs> some absolutely banging, criminally underrated games that I hope you'll all check out. But more importantly, I hope you check out all of the YouTubers that are, were in this collab. I just want to give a massive thank you to the, you all uh, for this co first collab I've really ever done on the channel for, gosh, it's been so many years, but this is definitely the first big collab I've ever done. I wanted to reach out to the people that I watch consistently and that I, l I love and enjoy their content. So if for any reason you're not, <laughs> you're not subscribed to any of these people, quit missing out. Definitely give them a sub. Thank you all again for watching. I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time.